Good afternoon, traders. Thanks for joining the live webinar with Admiral Markets. Today's focus is trading patterns, momentum, and support of resistance in the Forex market. We'll take a look at commodities and stock indices uh, if you like as well. Uh, so there's a lot of things there mentioned. We're going to try to glue them together, fit them together, uh, and see what kind of opportunities I think are interesting for, for myself uh, in today's market and later on. First, though, be aware that uh, this webinar is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit iowamarketsglobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact the appropriate entity for more details. Also, please uh, be aware and note that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on this. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, so good morning, Rowan. Good to hear that. And uh, just out of curiosity, any any trading basically that has uh, been done from uh, from you, anyone in this webinar looking at particular currency pairs or in trades, we can take a look at that. Feel free uh, to use the chat, just like Rowan uh, did. And uh, first of all, I want to kick off before we take a look at the live charts, uh, just a, a quick introduction for those that perhaps are new in this webinar or joining for the first, second, third time. Uh, Admiral Markets Broker uh, has a lot to offer here, AdmiralMarkets.com. Of course, accessing the market is the prime, uh, the, the primary, the premium, the, the, the most important thing you can do. Platforms, go to MT4 Supreme Edition, WebTrader, and uh, here you can see the products that can be traded, and here you can see how to start trading, a demo, live account, etc. But it also offers analytics, education, uh, so there's a lot of things that you can discover from a, a learning point of view, analysis point of view, articles. And one of those that you should always take a look at before trading is the calendar to see what kind of news events are going on uh, because that could always impact the, the market. You see some uh, images flashing by DAX, MT4 Supreme Edition. Uh, is something that is from Admiral Markets, unique for Admiral Markets. Also, the volatility settings is something that helps uh, with uh, with that, with the risk. And Forex 101 is, is a quick way, a quick educational course, uh, nine parts that then and I made with Admiral Markets. So you might want to check that out. So just a quick introduction there. Now let's take a look at the charts. All righty. So we're looking at the year dollar. And um, to me, this is this is looking like reversal territory at this moment. And I think, uh, in my personal view, a short right here is all fine. Uh, with the stop loss uh, above this candle high, the stop here at around 112.80, 112.75, I think should work out with a target maybe at the weekly pivot point around 111 or even more aggressive target at 110. At the S1. Now, why is that? Why do I think that this could be a short potential trade right here, uh, right here, right now? In fact, just based on this four-hour chart, and the reason is because, well, there are actually a couple of reasons to be honest. Uh, one of them is when we're looking at this template, you see a couple of things. You see Admiral Markets pivot points, Admiral Markets Keltner, Admiral Markets mini terminal. Those are all part of that MetaTrader for Supreme Edition, and you see that price has gone back into it. Uh, and if you look at a candlestick indicator that I've used in the last few weeks a couple of times. And if you're if you feel that you're a bit weaker with candlestick pattern recognition, this is a good indicator for for helping you kind of train train that. <clears throat> and you see here uh, already a couple of pat, uh, candlestick patterns, but those were above basically um, the Admiral Keltner. So I think not ready yet for full fledged reversal because I would like to see price close within the Keltner again. And that just happened actually with the previous one. Although their close was not at the low, uh, I think that the formation is still a, a pretty good, decent probability that this will uh, reverse. Um, that's one aspect, all right? The second aspect is basically the divergence between, let me take off this uh, indicator now, is the divergence between these tops, all right? So you have here a top and here a top. Uh, divergence between these tops, very clear on the hourly chart. You can see that also divergence between this top 
and the stop. If you're not sure, you can always put a line like this, and you see that the previous hump was higher than the next hump, but price, however, does make a higher high. That's called divergence. So uh, from that point of view, a, a retracement is also, I think, uh, likely. All right, from an Audi perspective, we see six candles not breaking this high. That's another reason. Uh, the fourth reason is the fact that 112.50 is a quarter resistance level. That's a strong resistance spot as well. The fifth reason is the fact that price is approaching this, these tops in here and is approaching the R1, which is also a potential bouncing spot and resistance level. So all in all, uh, I think that that could happen today. If, however, uh, a more conservative way to approach this could be to keep an eye on this daily chart. That could be maybe even the sweet balance, the sweet um, uh, compromise. If the four-hour chart seems too aggressive for a reversal, uh, then the daily chart might be a good one. If today's daily candle is anywhere near 1, 1, 11.75 would be nice. With a close near the low, and I, you know, anything like a few pips away, uh, let's see. Let me calculate it quickly. If it's just below 112 at least, that would be nice. Close below 112 uh, with a low at around 111.80. For instance, right? Let's say uh, if the close is anywhere within, if if the low is below 112, and the close is no, not more than 20 pips away from the low. All right. Sorry, sorry for making it. I don't want to make it complicated. But once again, the low of the candle below 112, and the close not more than 20 pips away from the low. Then today's daily candle could be a, a good reversal candle. So 111.74 low and a 111.84 close would look something like this, for instance. Now, hang on. All right. So that would look like a decent candle. And uh, I think that could kickstart a reversal or retracement. We never know with reversals. Retracements, you never know uh, how far, how deep it's going to be. Is it just a small correction for more for more trend continuation? That's always the, the risk with reversals. That's why reversal trading is always a bit more difficult. But in this case, when things line up, so many uh, aspects give confluence, then uh, you know, I, I'm more keen to, to try a reversal trade. All right, that's about it, I think. If price does break above 113, that could be a significant effect uh, for upside. You know, at least we could see price then retesting 115, maybe even this top in here. Um, I would have to reanalyze that, how I would trade that. I don't think it's worth going through all the, the thinking process about how to do that. We might take a look tomorrow. If that does happen, for whatever reason, if price just turns right now and it does continue with the trend and tomorrow it closes like this, we'll reanalyze it and are we probably looking for some kind of long? But that's something we can discuss tomorrow again. Um, I don't expect it, but you never know. This could, of course, occur if the daily candle does look like that, then obviously this is what your dollar wants to do. So. That's something to keep an eye on. That's kind of like an invalidation level. If price breaks above 113, that's the invalidation point. Furthermore, last thing, by the way, uh, very, very last thing. I don't want to dive into your dollar too long here uh, either, but uh, it does to me slightly. It doesn't look that neat, actually, as I have it on my wave analysis chart, but slightly looks like a rising wedge, all right, which, which is a reversal uh, candlestick pattern. So uh, that's something, uh, an extra reason perhaps. All right, so let's move on. Any questions, of course, feel free. We can come back to the euro dollar later. You can still keep an eye on it as it, uh, as it moves in the next uh, minutes. Pound dollar is uh, basically 
pretty choppy. Uh, last week, we were looking at it somewhere here, and eventually price did break up. I think it was here. Let me double check. Yeah. Uh, eventually, it did break to the upside, as you can see. That made a very strong cor correction, then up again. So quite, uh, quite choppy, actually, as you can see, with a lot of momentum, but just going sideways, ultimately. And at this moment, I don't really have any particular interesting trade in mind myself. If anything, uh, I well, honestly, I think it, it could go either way. It's right at the weekly pivot point. It's right in the middle between these uh, two trend lines. So flip a coin, I say, and attach a side to it. That will probably be just as good of a <laughs> guess. Because uh, <clears throat> from this point of view, it could go both ways. I have a slight bias maybe to downside. Now, first of all, we can use correlation. Your dollar looks, to, from my view, bearish, all right? Unless today's candle closes bullish, as I just explained, uh, your dollar looks bearish. That's one thing. Second thing is the fact that this is strong momentum. I would expect at least an A, B, C, or otherwise a one, two, three. <clears throat> So that's another reason why I think that that could uh, occur. Uh, and we do have, if I see it correctly, yes, clear divergence, even more so than your dollar, double divergence on the four hour chart between these tops. Or maybe even, well, double divergence for sure. One could even argue a, a hidden third divergence there. So that's a lot for a four hour chart. Without hitting this moving average, that means the divergence is still in play is still valid because as soon as price hits the long-term moving average, which is in my, what I use is 144 EMA close, then that inv kind of invalidates, that's, that, that's the target for the divergence, which means that it resets itself. It hasn't done that, so this divergence is still valid, it's still a factor to, uh, to deal with and to, to take into account. So therefore, another strong reason why I think that if anything, I think then it has a good chance of making the fall down to the S1. And actually, I wouldn't be surprised if it breaks the S1 and goes down to the S2. So if I had to choose, although I don't like this particular spot because of the fact that it's quite choppy here, I would choose short. I would put the stop loss above this top and aim for the S2. All right, now, I personally uh, would rather trade the euro dollars. So I would then skip this pound dollar, I mean, uh, myself. But if I had to choose if I was only trading the pound dollar that that would be my trading plan uh, but this is not something I would probably choose for right now I would rather focus on the euro dollar myself but um, yeah that's it so why the stop loss here by the way is because if this is a one two or an a b then it shouldn't break above this trend line it shouldn't break above these tops that is the invalidation level hence I think that's also why it's a good place for the stop loss Uh, let's see. Flavius has a good comment about the euro pound. Let's take a look right away. Uh, euro pound making the same formation. Indeed, I totally agree. Divergence between these tops. One slight difference with the pound, and therefore I might like the pound reversal more than the euro. Uh, than the euro. Sorry, the pound dollar. I like even more than the euro pound. Perhaps at this moment is because there's no divergence on the four hour chart. Actually, your dollar technically doesn't have full-fledged divergence either, to be honest. It has hidden divergence here, uh, not hidden, but it has uh, uh, one hour divergence between these tops actually. That's something to, to note, by the way, is that the pound dollar has uh, more divergence than the year dollar. So that's one of the reasons, that's one, factor in favor of the pound another actually another solution could be is to to another solution could be to take both euro and pound but split the risk on both for instance could be also one way of doing that um, looking at this euro pound though i uh, would agree that it's basically at resistance the r1 the trend line 
one hour divergence so pretty good chance it, uh, it could make a retracement back to the pivot point for instance here too you have a candle closing within the Keltner let me take a look if that's a, a pattern you can double check it very quickly Sorry for that. One second, folks. My chart closed by accident. Almost there. All right, there we go. Sorry for that. Um, your pound I was talking about. Not this one, apparently. I thought it would be some engulfing twins. That's what I would say, but not according to the indicator. Oh, well. Doesn't matter. Uh, to me, it still looks like a reversal sequence. If you look at these two candles, wicks on top, close below the previous low, this low breaking, this low. So pretty good chance. What could happen, though, on the outlet chart is that price might retest these tops first still in the next hours you could see something like this if it doesn't if this top does not get broken in the next three hours and does something like this then there's a good chance that this will be some weakness there could be some head and shoulders here for instance like this the price could do like that fail to break and then fall that's something i could see the year bound happen indeed good good point flavius so good uh, that we looked at the euro pound dollar yen Still in the sideways zone, and price is uh, basically breaking this bottom, but it broke so cautiously, so sh meagerly with all these wicks here that uh, I have some doubts about the break now at this moment. I would probably, for me to, to, to hang on to this trade or to add positions, Need to see a four-hour candle that closes near the low like this. Actually, a four-hour candle that breaks below this Keltner probably. The Keltner itself is around 110.75. So I would probably need to see something like this occur. Maybe see a small retracement. And I would think about shorting it. Uh, but at this moment, this break is, is way too cautious, way too choppy, and um, therefore on alert because the alternative is that this is a hook back and then starts to break above this top and there could be a breakout up to the R1 so my key level has changed not from this but to here and still keeping an eye on these levels right here for the upside so that's my zone that I'm keeping an eye on on the, on the dollar yen looking at the four hour candles and daily candles for direction about that breakout to the down or upside downside though be aware of 109.50 which is the S1 and 78.6 fib Upside, be aware of the R1, and then after that, the R2 and the minus 272 target. All righty. Uh, Ozzy. Ozzy has reached the R2, uh, R1 earlier this week, and uh, is also in a yeah, good uptrend channel, just like the euro dollar. Uh, we can take a look at the crosses to see what could be maybe uh, a better, you know, reversal trade in a way. But so far, the Aussie, I don't think, is set up at this moment. Considering the last four-hour candle, still pretty, still strong close. This one, this candle is still open. So I don't see particular reason for the Aussie yet. All right. Now, I'm not saying it's, it's not a resistance. I'm not saying it cannot turn. But it's just not set up uh, as well, I think. Uh, eventually, it could there could be a reaction uh, as well with the Aussie. 
uh, and it could move lower, it could break this channel. That would be interesting if it breaks this channel. Uh, but the Aussie is, is just not showing the same candles at this moment. It's not. Oh, it's also not showing divergence between these tops on the outing chart. If you look at this piece here, so yes, it is at resistance, but there's not as much confluence as with the others, in my view. So, if anything, it could still actually retrace down here. It could stay within this channel easily. So, probably better to either wait for a break above this channel, wait for a move down to the channel, or wait for a break below the channel. So just based at the, just looking at this channel itself, those are some things to keep an eye on uh, with you know for the Aussie. All right, the, the Kiwi. Let me refresh this template quickly. There we go. Big big surge up indeed on this 50 minute chart, an hourly chart, and four hour chart for the Kiwi. This move is a lot. 160 is. is Relatively big for slow mover, relatively slow mover. Uh, probably the best for the Kiwi is upside. It's pretty bullish, this move up. And I don't see any divergence between the tops. And the Kiwi, if anything, I would be looking for longs after the retracement. I think that personally, a, a move up like this with that strength, there's a good chance that after a retracement occurs, that price will break this high and will make a, basically some kind of flag like that and continue. So what could be a likely turning spot for the Kiwi? And I could be putting a fib from here to here and waiting for price to retrace to the 38 or 23.6 fib. Yeah, that seems the most likely. So uh, at this moment, I'm not sure if this is the, the necessarily the starting spot of this retracement. It definitely could be. doesn't have to be, though. But whenever it stops, it could still push up. I'm going to move that fib, and I will wait for one of these two fibs to occur, and we'll, like, we'll wait, sorry, look for the retracement, look for the bounce and continuation. That might take a while, but that's uh, my idea for the, for the Kiwi. All right, gold's quick look at it is, yeah, basically we need a break above this trend line. If that happens, we got to break out to the upside. That could be a very significant event, in fact. Why? Because look at this uh, triangle at this moment, or at least support or resistance lines. If it breaks above orange, there could be significant gains to the upside on gold. If it fails to break, then this could be a hook back, and we could fall down to the bottom of the trend line right there again, and uh, go back to the 61 or 78.6 fib. This is one, two, three, four, fifth week. week. So this and next week are important. Uh, if this or next week break this top, then there's a good chance of a breakout. If by the end of this week, this does not fall, uh, this does not break, sorry, then there's a good chance to fall uh, down to the bottom and then bounce there again. Uh, historically, there is a, a correlation indeed between the Aussie and gold. Aussie getting stronger as gold gets stronger. Uh, gold, as gold gets stronger, uh, basically, uh, better for the Aussie uh, in as it is a exporter of um, commodities. So generally speaking, that is that is true. 
it is not a perfect correlation. There are some times where it it's, doesn't align itself as, ni as nicely. I remember doing some analysis on that, and there was a year where there was a very good correlation. I think that was like 2014. Then uh, last year, that correlation was, or two years ago, that was not so strong anymore. So uh, there are other factors, of course, that drive the Aussie as well, the Australian economy, for instance. So there is some correlation, but of course, they also behave autonomously at times. So it's, it's, it's a good point to keep an eye on, though, and, and be aware of, definitely. But it's only one of the things to keep an eye on, too. So that is, I think, on the gold, a very critical spot uh, right here. And I have a bias that it would bounce back down. But if it breaks and or bounces and then breaks upside, could be very interesting on, on gold. All righty. This is a moving average I like to use. Gives an indication of momentum very neatly, in my opinion. Euro yen and um, having some, basically some thoughts that this is likely to correct lower. Good momentum to the downside, a bit of a choppy upside. So if price manages to break through this trend line, for instance, or maybe even better to, to draw a channel like this, for instance. So if it manages to break through the support, like that. Um, this could be still a correction. This could be basically something like a zigzag. And the break of this could lead to the pivot point and then perhaps lower. Something uh, that will drive it is obviously if your dollar starts moving down or the dollar yen starts moving down. So this both could actually uh, move the your, your yen lower and take the your yen uh, with it. So yeah, from that point of view, your yen seems like it could make some good downside uh, based on those correlations. But also technically, I think um, looking good for a fact that this is momentum, and this is a pullback, 88.6 fib. Could be an interesting turn as it breaks uh, through this, these support levels. All righty. Pound yen. Looks like a failed break on the weekly Keltner. We can double check that with this candlestick pattern indicator. Yes, look at that. Strong weekly candle. That was two weeks ago, actually, already. Double top. Price moving lower from that. So to me, just like the euro yen, this looks ready for a bigger uh, retracement. And I would not be surprised if price breaks below this support and keeps falling down to the S2, for instance. If, for whatever reason, it does break above the pivot, this weekly pivot and the trend line, then this could be a bullish breakout too because we can put a fib from here to here. And we can see a 38.2 fib bounce. So this could be the upside breakout. Or alternatively, if it breaks below this support, there could be this breakout down to the 50 fib. Four hour chart looks good to keep an eye on the, the candles. Alrighty folks, well we looked at uh, the majors I think in the major crosses. Do you have any particular currency pair in mind that you would like to take a look at? Or do you want to show me any charts that uh, you have done for your analysis? Any particular trade setups that you have taken or are thinking of taking? You can 
you know, reach out and write a chat to me and let me know. Uh, regarding uh, some of the other instruments that you might want to think about, like, or maybe uh, you think are interesting, are, for instance, gold. We can take a look at that right now. Uh, sorry, uh, oil, excuse me. And uh, you can see the price eventually bouncing off the support zone after breaking this rising wedge. Let me take off that rising wedge. Looks corrective to me, and more downside I think could happen. I would expect failure here as it reaches up, and I think that could be interesting to keep an eye on a bounce there. Otherwise, nothing special, I think. S&P 500. Still, still pushing up, in fact. This trend keeps going. Dow Jones, too. Bit of a correction on the daily chart and weekly. So let's see if it breaks uh, to the upside again. This webinar is focused on uh, patterns, momentum, and support resistance. So if you have any questions on those parts, let me know. We can dive into some, uh, some other charts to take a look at patterns, momentum, and support resistance. Uh, those are three concepts, and I think they're very useful to use together. Why? I'll tell you just quickly. I, I see some comments, and we'll d dive into the DAX in more detail uh, in just a second. Why are these three things important? Just as a side note, support or resistance. This is resistance. This is support, right? Uh, then we have patterns indicating, for instance, as price falls like this, and we see... Inverted head and shoulders, right, at the support. That's a pattern. It's a chart pattern. And then we see momentum kick in right here to the upside. So what do we see using these two patterns? We see the price is approaching support. We see that there's a pattern confirming the fact that uh, there is a bounce at support. And then we see momentum to the opposite side kick in by looking at uh, a lower time frame and seeing sturdy candles breaking above the neckline, for instance, right? So uh, that, that, these, these, three, these three things alone make analysis uh, quick, simple, to the point, and you get most of what you're looking for or, or most of the things that are important. <clears throat> what you can use for uh, analyzing these three things, trend, for instance, easily moving average, like I do, uh, you could use for, or momentum, I should say. You can use for patterns. Of course, that takes a bit of recognition. That takes a bit of practice to recognize. Support of resistance, pretty simple. You can use automated moving math levels. You can use animal market spirit points. Uh, you can use animal market skeleton. You can use uh, fractals, um, Bollinger bands instead of Keltner. I like Keltner, but uh, tops and bottoms. You know, so that uh, there's a lot of options there. Uh, regarding DAX, I only briefly looked at it, indeed, without analyzing it too much. From my perspective, it is difficult to, to say in a, in a way because I trade mostly um, the majors in the forest market, but from this point of view, Just trying to assess what the chances of this trend being over. And there is a bit of double divergence between these tops. I don't like the weekly candles here, these two. That indicates to me uh, a lower low here, a lower high. And that makes me a bit cautious of the upside, personally. 
I would probably like it more if price were traced to S1 or S2 or even S3, any of these S's, in fact, before attempting maybe one more uh, dip before it does perhaps bounce and continue to the upside. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's what I think probably makes the most sense for potential upside. Downside, I think, does not make yet any sense yet. Um, it could happen. I don't think it's worth the risk. With S&P 500, for instance, I would be waiting for six candles, six weekly candles, not to break this top. Seven, perhaps. That could be a better indication of a reversal. Minus 272 target is close by. S&P 500 might make a retracement at that level, which is uh, around 24.26. All right, some other currency pairs quickly. Uh, no one mentioned anything besides the DAC, so let's move on and take a look at Euro New Zealand. Pretty sturdy momentum. Same like the pound New Zealand. Yeah, looking at these charts, I think honestly, there's little difficult to imagine this could go up by a lot. I think it's pretty set up for more downside. It doesn't have to be right now, though. It could still be a retracement similar to uh, basically what we saw on the other currency with the Kiwi. Uh, it's, it looks the same on the pond, as you know. Looking like this, 23.6, 38.2 Fib, looking like bearish bouncing spots to me. Can we look at our New Zealand? Domin is asking. I'm short on it, and do you think it will hit support at 106.10? It's a great question. Thanks for sharing uh, that analysis and, and, and your trade. And let's take a look right now on New Zealand. So pretty much a triangle. <clears throat> we can put a fib from here to here. 105.30. That's well within the target for uh, Doman. 106.10. Pretty choppy downside. Should be doable considering this particular picture because price has space to 105.30. So I would say looking good to me. And I would say that, yeah, that's that's pretty likely. I would say. Minus 272 target looks like it's ready for uh, press to get there. So, folks, uh, any other pairs? Otherwise, we'll wrap it up for today. We can take a last look at uh, your dollar again and see what happened with the euro, pound, dollar, and let's take a look quickly. Uh, your dollar is moving slightly down, but this candle is still open, but so far... 
edging along, pound dollar two, dollar yen sideways, I'll use the retracing, but strong price action. Gold at a massive spot there, I think. Dollar index divergence and falling, breaking this uh, support line as well. Let's see how far it could push, but so far a lot of momentum actually. So for more webinars, uh, please feel free to go right here. Sorry, that's the wrong one. But anyhow, you can just click on education actually. And then click on Forex and CFD webinars. And you can join the live webinars. In fact, then tomorrow takes a look at live trading session. I take a look at uh, candlestick patterns. Together we take a look at confluence points, how to trade them with more confidence. Next week again, same schedule, net at session recap on Monday, trading on Wednesday, I Tuesday and Wednesday webinars. So something to uh, to look forward to, I hope. Also the UK general election is coming up. That's a, a pre-fact analysis uh, by Nedet and myself on June 1. June 9, we have a, another webinar, a second part, uh, of this UK general election and we take a look at the results they will be the, the voting will happen uh, on June 8th so by June 9 I hope that we have enough data to to give you some first analysis and uh, give you an idea of what uh, might uh, we expect in uh, in the next weeks I see two of these webinars. I'll need to fix that. <laughs> That's not the meaning. That's by accident. I need to change that. Here you go. Here's June 9, though, the UK general election 2017. All right, folks. Well, thanks for being here. I uh, hope to see you in the next webinars. Uh, wish you all uh, great trading. Make sure to take a look at Admiral Markets Supreme Edition right here, Forex 101, too, but also the Supreme Edition for many of these features that I showed you and more. And uh, talk to you soon. Cheers.